Let's go for some picture. Roll sound. Pictures up. Rolling. Camera set. And action. My name is Mickey Rapkin. I'm the writer director of the Anne Frank Gift Shop, and this is my story. They're ready for us. The idea for the film actually came about around 20 years ago. I had graduated college. I was living in Europe for a year and a half, sort of trying to figure out what to do with my life. And I went to the Anne Frank house and I was so moved, you know, I mean, you're like, I heard your entire life about this thing. I can't believe I'm there. I'm touring it. I'm emotional. And then like, most museums, you exit through the gift shop. I've just come face to face with this horrific evil. And then it's like, oh, I should get a postcard to send to my mom. I never forgot that kind of weird moment. I mean, I think Mickey has done such a brilliant job on the page of looking at so many big, important ideas, uh, history, emotional, cultural, and finding a way to weave all of these things together. It deals with it in a, in a very honest and funny way. We've seen so many stories about the Holocaust and, and Jewish history, and it is harder in some ways to figure out for people who know it, how to, what's another way in, what's another way, because the atrocity could be so overwhelming. The film imagines this meeting between two representatives of the Anne Frank House who've come to New York to meet with this design firm that they've hired. The Anne Frank House is worried about the things that we're all worried about. Why don't young people know about the Holocaust? They want to do something. I do not know how to reach young people. But the cost of doing nothing? That I do know. So I had this idea that they're pitching this design firm help us to reimagine the gift shop to appeal to young people. What if we had a survivor at the gift shop who could answer people's questions? We can't ask a survivor to sit for office hours. Why not? Because they're old. A couple of years ago, there was the story from the claims conference that made these international headlines around the world. Two thirds of young people in America don't know what the Holocaust is. 11% of these young people think Jews somehow caused the Holocaust. Just these really horrifying statistics. I was like, how do I marry these two concepts of this sort of dark comedy, the Anne Frank gift shop, with what I hope is a moving story. This character, Amy, in the film, she's made a million of these bad jokes. Auschwitz has a Twitter account. Do they? The original thirst trap. And then at the end, in the quietest moment of this meeting, she suddenly offers this very sincere idea. What if every day at closing, we all said the mourner's Kaddish? The Jewish prayer for the dead. Those words, they're meant to be spoken out loud and you don't even have to say it for Anne. Everyone's grieving something. There's something so beautiful about saying this communal prayer together, this prayer that we've all grown up saying. This film, through all of its jokes about all of the things, it just, it gets you in the guts with its heart. This is the first narrative film I've directed. I've been lucky enough to surround myself with incredible people. Chloe Weaver is our DP. She's done incredible work on Hacks and on Chef's Table. We have Ari Grainer, who you've seen in a million things. FX is Mrs. America. I mean, she's just incredible. Chris Perfetti, who's so funny on Abbott Elementary. Jason Butler Harner, who is so good on Ozark and Handmaid's Tale and a million other things. And Kate Burton, who's a legend. Josh Myers, so funny on Mad TV. Mary Beth Barone, who crushed it on Jimmy Fallon last year. I mean, this is just an unbelievable group of people. We're so lucky to be here together. This project wouldn't have happened without Reboot. It is our focus to really support Jewish stories across the whole diaspora. We want to tell the stories of Jews of color and are supporting projects from those creators. We want to tell the stories of Jews in the LGBTQ community. We want to tell the stories anchored by women. We want to tell genre stories. What Reboot does is allow you to be a Jewish person in any way that is comfortable to you. These people are here to help you do your best work. And this allows you to, to tell a story you've been wanting to tell in a time where it's impossible to raise money for things. They're encouraging you, hey, here's a chance, take a shot. In this instance, we're definitely telling a story from a perspective that is specific to a, a faith or a tradition that through that incubator is allowing the truth to happen, and yet it's not uh, precious and exclusionary. One of the terms that has sort of become universal amongst not only the Jewish community, but people overall is, you know, never again and never forget the notion that the Holocaust is something that must remain in our collective memory for many generations, 
because the minute we stop talking about it, we start forgetting about it, and then it creates the conditions in which that sort of thing can happen again. In our culture, especially where we are now, like you don't see very many Jewish families on television and movies. I also think that it's important to see it in ways that doesn't always have to be the focus, but is a part of it. I hope the takeaway is that this actually happened. Six million people. And if we don't figure out how to keep that consciousness of hatred and organization hatred, and of course, Nazis, neo-Nazis and white you know, supremacy, it can only repeat itself. It's a dark comedy, okay? There's a lot of, you might say, bad jokes, bad Holocaust jokes, but you ultimately come around to this beautiful moving idea, which is we need to keep telling the story again and again and again in every way we can, or this will happen again. So tell your bad jokes. Just keep telling the story. I think it went well. I mean, you know, I ate a donut in a meeting about starvation camps, but I think the Mourner's Cottage was a strong closing. <laughs>